This is a response to RPM11111, exposing a Christian from Scotland caught up in the use of atheistic and early anti-Christian propaganda and disinformation tactics to vilify and demonize the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormons. RPM11111 says he is a biblical believing Christian. He seems to be concerned about the LDS people, has judged them as being unsaved because they are working hard on being good when we are saved by grace and not by works. When the different atheistic and early anti-Christian tactics that he uses are exposed, he sends you a list of questions that he's not interested in seeing the answers to, for they are already been answered by LDS apologists over and over again. He's only interested in asking the questions, hoping that the questions will freak out those who aren't familiar with LDS beliefs or the answers or the apologists answers to these type of questions. Questions that are answered over and over again so many times. When someone starts to answer and deal with these questions and post answers with references, he starts to block, delete, ignore, or disqualify the answers as being gibberish failed attempts. When Bible is cited as requested, he charges misinterpretations. When asked to deal with his own questions and tactics as they are mirrored back to him in atheistic and early anti-Christian writings, he goes to another method of attack. As if he can't deal with the evidence, he charges too that you're taking up too much space on my videos. How dare you, you coward. Yep, that's some of the things he said. On 2-28-2009, 2 as Justin Martyr Jr. was in the process of answering his issues over the LDS beliefs in becoming like Christ, or becoming God, showing many biblical passages used by earlier Christians in defense of their own versions of deification or, or becoming gods or godhead, RPM 11111 deletes and blocks Justin's post and comments. For, this is what he says, this is for Justin Martyr Jr. He cites Titus 3, 9 through 11, and then says, I have blocked the above user on the basis of this scripture, and because he consumes too much space with the drivel and is underhanded when proven wrong. So he claims that I'm being proven wrong with the sources and citations which he doesn't seem to be willing to deal with. This attitude and response towards someone who can challenge him and can answer his questions and point out his tactics as being those like atheists and early anti-Christians, tactics, propaganda, disinformation methods of attack, this isn't going to improve open discussion to where misunderstandings can be explored between the different faiths nowadays. His continual use of vilification tactics is only going to continue to create more hate, misunderstandings, and harm towards the LDS people he claims to be concerned about. If his concern is to get Jesus to save them, then why the satanic witnessing tactics that are like what the early anti-Christians and atheists used? For example, to vilify the LDS Jesus, which is the biblical one, not the unbiblical three in one nice and cream Jesus that even those who gave us the creed admitted wasn't in the, the scriptures. He used a shocking generalization tactic like the atheist. He says, oh, Jesus is the brother to the devil. That's like how atheists say, Christians drink blood but without explaining the sarcasm. It's a shocking generalization used to freak people out that aren't offered a full understanding of the belief. That's what a shocking generalization is, is you don't explain the belief and the reasoning behind it or the scriptures or the thinking. It's just brought down to a simple phrase to shock people with. It would be like expounding on all of the evils that Satan or the devil has done, then asking, Do you know who the Christians say created the devil? Christ did. Tertullian, 145-220, through 220. now he's one that uh, first mentions the Trinity and expounds upon it, so that's something that the critics would probably agree with. But I wonder if they would agree with this, what he says in his works on the flesh of Christ, chapter 5, verse 17, quote, God therefore sent down into the virgin's womb his word, make a comment here, of course his word is Jesus Christ, quoting again, as the good brother who should blot out the memory of the evil brother. End of quote. Obviously, 
It's the devil. See also Genesis 2, 4 through 5, Ephesians 3, 14 through 15, about family in heaven, generations in the, in the heavens before the creation. The doctrine of the pre-existence was a belief that was in early Christianity and became legendized during uh, later centuries. By the Council of Constantinople in 553 AD, they started to uh, question origins views about versions of the pre-existent and uh, it eventually became a legend as time went by in later centuries. Critics mention of Satan or the devil thus taps into later versions of the pre-existence of souls. Looking into who the devil and Satan are, they'll run into early Christian versions of premortal life as spirit beliefs. Beliefs restored in Elias now rejected by critics who claim to believe in the Bible and believe and are part of historic biblical Christianity where they claim that the LDS are not. So the critics use of later legendized versions of the pre-existence beliefs in order to say that the LDS are satanic, devilish, and to vilify the LDS Jesus as being evil because his spirit brother, the devil, is evil, is ironic. It's ironic because just as it also is ironic for the critics to say that the LDS have the wrong Jesus because they don't go along with the three in one Nicene Creed Jesus, which again is unbiblical. But then critics mock LDS deification becoming gods, that's what deification means, it's becoming gods, when those who gave us the creed also taught it. Early Christian fathers that gave us the Nicene Creed of 325 AD also taught and defended their own versions of deification. Christ became a man so that we can learn from a man how to become gods. It was a phase that was often repeated throughout the early Christian writings. LDS prophets testify that this doctrine was restored by revelation. Critics claim to believe in the Bible, mock LDS beliefs that Christ, angels, and prophets went and preached the gospel to the spirits in prison, even though this belief is biblical and historical. First Peter chapter 3 verses 15 through 20, chapter 4 verses 5 through 6, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 through 14, Isaiah 42, 6 through 7. The early anti-Christian Celsus mocked the Christians for this belief, saying, Surely you Christians don't believe that Christ, after he could not induce the inhabitants of, on the surface of the earth to believe in his doctrine, descended into the lower regions in order to get people to believe there. Well, Origen said yes, in response to the early anti-Christian Celsus, said yes, yeah, we believe that. We have no problem with that belief. This old Origen expounds upon the belief, as do many other early Christians, and it was a big part of early Christian history. It's seen throughout all over historic Christianity and the scattered branches of Christianity, their, their artworks, their legends, their mystery plays, and you can see this doctrine, how it eventually became legends in some areas and what was preserved in the illumination manuscripts and artworks and iconography, and mosaics, and uh, all types of artworks, it was depicted because, of course, it was a biblical teaching that Christ went and preached the gospel to the spirits in prison. Hand grips in historic Christianity is where masonry hand grips are from. Masonry being a fraternalized later version of mystery plays or mystery religions, including many aspects of early Christian mysteries. That's where masonry and the masons got their any of their hand grips from and their symbols from. The LDS testify to not be a borrowing of masonry, but a restoration of early Christian mysteries. And they testify that it was through revelation that the prophets learned of the mysteries and restored the mysteries. When later Christians reject the bodily attributes of Christ, claimed the resurrection was a spiritual resurrection rather than a physical one, they then had to figure out how to depict the three-in-one Godhead. So they came up with different types of symbols for the Trinity. Some of these symbols are found underneath the early to later anti-Christian type tactics and atheistic tactics, disinformation tactics and anti-Christian logic and misinterpretation of symbols and vilification of symbols tactics would make it appear that the critics themselves are satanic, part of the Illuminati and New World Order that they wrongly allege LDS are. It is because of the continual vilification of LDS people and their beliefs that just Mark Jr. and others of his own research team, not all LDS, have continued to expose harmful disinformation tactics and hate-causing propaganda used by such critics. Use of atheistic, early anti-Christian type propaganda disinformation tactics as used by anti-Mormon Christians will only cause harm to themselves. They'll be responsible before God for any harm, discrimination, and deaths their works cause on LDS people.